somebody tell me what I've done wrong? Well, let me tell you about a girl I know She's my baby and I love her so Well, every morning when the sun comes up She brings me coffee in my favorite cup, and I know. Yeah, Morning, Doctor Arnold. Doctor Weatherill took your patients. Thank you. Well, pretty lightly, really. Uh, mostly repeat prescriptions. Oh, and Mrs. Evans Lee's blood pressure's on the up again. Right. Thanks. Sorry, I am. Um, was the children? I got them to school, but there were floods of tears when I tried to leave. They're missing their mum. Yes. They just don't understand why she can't come home. How is she? Any change? Oh, they said she passed a comfortable night. Gordon, why don't you just take a bit of time off, hey? I don't think so. Excuse me. Better get on with my wardrobes. Now, I'll just hop back into bed for me, Mr Greengrass. Oh. oh. They're looking if I can crawl the way I feel. You've had so much iron, a magnet would cling to you. You should be bursting with energy. Must be going rusty then. <laughs> it's very, very pernicious, this anemia. There's only one pernicious body around here, and I'm looking at it. So, how are we feeling, Mr. Greengrass? Let's say I shan't be starting any thick books. Uh huh. Well, we're still waiting for confirmation from the lab, but with a bit of luck, I'm delighted to say you're going to be going home later on this afternoon, Mr. Greengrass. Fervent prayers have been directed to Our Lady. Oh, we shall get home to go to. Is Mr. Greengrass wearing a clean nightshirt? There's been no clean laundry today, Matron. Disgraceful. We're short of towels, and we're down to the twice darned sheets. This will not do. I will investigate, sister. Can I take you out tonight? New Albert Finney's on in town. Um, well, I was thinking more about dinner. We need to talk about London. So you finally made your mind up, then? Yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm washing my hair. Nurse Taylor, my next patient, please, if it's not too much trouble. It's just dinner and a chat. How about restaurant in Napoli? What, for old time's sake? What's the point? Why am I still waiting for my hemorrhoids, nurse? The broken machine was reported at the beginning of the week. Mrs. Norsby promised to make do with the other machine until you repaired the fault. Uh, but the, uh, the shop had to order the part, Mr. Middleditch, and it's uh, due in this morning. Mrs. Norsby said it was too much work for just the one machine. She had to overload it just to keep up. Said it just blew up in the middle of the wash. I think the motor's burnt out. And the motor for the second machine. Will that be another rare and unobtainable part? Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm confident that the shop will have the part in stock, Mr. Middleditch. Please see to it, Ken. Immediately. This hospital cannot function without clean laundry. Right away, matron. The telephone from St. Bride's. She's having these terrible stomach pains. Right, let's pop into this chair, shall we? It's, uh, it's Miss Peterson, is it? Oh, that's right. Hello, I'm Dr. Weatherall. Can you tell me what's been happening? Uh, he was playing the recessional in assembly when she just keeled Stop over. Stop fussing, Charles. There's nothing much the matter with me. Right, well, we'll have a quick look and then we'll see if we can find out what's wrong. Right. Could, you, uh, could you wait outside for me, do you think? It's all right. We're engaged. Please, Charles. Wait a moment, just there. I've had a word with the other doctors, and they're all willing to pitch in until things are back to normal. If things ever do get back to normal. <sighs> Must be exhausting dashing over to Leeds every five minutes. I'm afraid I haven't been to visit Caroline for days. She can't see, she can't hear, she can't speak. She, uh, she has no idea if it's me holding her hand or one of the nurses. How ghastly for you. What are the doctors saying? Well, all we can do is wait. And all I can do is give the children some sort of routine. So, thank you for your offer, Mr. Middleditch, but for the moment, it's business as usual. All right, you pop your legs down for me. How long have you been bleeding? A couple of days. Much pain? Yeah. And the date of your last period? 
I've never been very regular, I don't know. Have your periods always been very heavy? No. No, not like this, no. OK. Look, is there something that you could give me for the pain? I really should return to school. I've got classes this afternoon. No, no, I'm afraid there's no question of that. Um, did you have any idea that you might be pregnant? No. No, none at all, no. Right. Well, I'm afraid there's a very real chance that you might have miscarried. You can tell that just by looking at me. I'm very sorry. So, uh, I'm going to need a bit of a drip, and then I'm going to need to admit you for a procedure called a DNC, which is just to make sure we oh. clear down there. Is that absolutely necessary? Well, if we don't perform it, then there's a very real chance of um, infection or hemorrhaging, so can you just try and relax? I know I'll go and make some arrangements, all right? Can you finish that off for me? Well, well, well. That's all I need. Green grass. And I thought you were dead. Yeah, I'm sorry to disappoint you. What are you doing in here? Oh, just a social call. That's my mate Derek over there. But I thought, uh, seeing as you were stuck in here, you might appreciate a bit of light reading. I prefer the bunch of grapes. Classified section, page five, top right-hand corner. Any person cognizant with the whereabouts of Claude Jeremiah Greengrass, formerly resident in Aidensfield, please contact box number 437 where they may learn something to their advantage. But it's not to mine. Dr. Armour, I'd around. On his ward rounds. Well, it's, uh, it's kind of urgent. I'll put his lights up. This case was discovered in the wreckage of the bus, close to where your wife was found. Do you recognise it, Dr. Armrod? Well, it looks exactly like my old school case. But what would Caroline be doing with a suitcase? She, she never said she was going anywhere. Well, there's some uh, personal effects inside. Personal effects? What kind of personal effects? Perhaps you could take a look inside. Tell me if you recognise anything. Lifeboat standing by. There's been an accident. Trawler off Fossey Bank. It's a head injury and is unconscious but having fits. And Dr. Omrod's still in his room with PC Bellamy. Thank you, Lizzie. We couldn't possibly ask Dr. Omrod anyway. He's got far too much to think about. Dr. Wetherill? With a patient. She's waiting for Dr. Omrod to anaesthetise. Then it will have to be Dr. Cheriton. Mm. Mr. Rose should have finished his list by now. Yes, Dr. Cheriton should be available. So you can identify the contents as belonging to your wife? These are Caroline's things, yes. Look, um... I'm sorry, I just don't understand. Why would she be going away without taking the children? Well, I really couldn't say. She waved goodbye to me that morning, knowing she was going to do this. 
Well, I'm sure there's a, a logical explanation. Well, there's no way we can ask, is there? She left nothing at the home, no notes, no... Just nothing. Packed in this morning. It's only fit for a museum piece. I thought you were supposed to be doing this place up. Eh? I can't afford to do everything at once. You range cost an arm and a leg. Tell me, lad, you remember what your old granddad used to say on the subject of false economy? Uh, I'll have to go and pick up a new one. It's the fish I'm worried about. I've got a hundred weight of prime cod fillet on its way. It won't last five minutes out of the fridge. Well, you've got a problem, lad. Problem? Problem? I've got the grand opening tonight. I've got the newspaper coming. And it... Who's going to do these spuds while I go and buy a new fridge? Well, it's going to cost you. Would you like to see your fiancé before the operation? You won't say anything to him, will you? Not if you don't want me to, no. He's the school chaplain. We're engaged, but certain standards are expected of the staff. If any suggestion of this were to get out, I'd lose my job, so would he. Right, I understand. It would put me in an intolerable position. He'd be forced to lie to the governess to protect me. All right, well, don't worry. All we need to tell him is that you're undergoing some gynecological investigations. So. Well, then, I will see him then. Right. I need to talk to you. Then talk to me now. How are your sea legs, Doctor? The Coast Guard have been on the telephone. SOS from a trawler at sea. A crew member with a head injury. The casualty's unconscious and he's begun to fit. The lifeboat crew are expecting you at the station. Right, I'll grab the immediate care kit. And I'll need oxygen. Look, you better have some help with that. Uh, I believe Alan's around somewhere. You don't know what you're going to find when you get out there. Take one of my casualty nurses. Nurse Taylor. But I didn't think that was allowed. Uh, the last time Nurse Taylor attended an accident, you made it clear your nurses weren't to leave the hospital. Unless they had my prior permission. How many more times, Greengrass? No. But, but if, if, if you don't help me, Oscar, I mean, you, you could be signing me death warrant. Unfortunate, but nothing to do with me. I saved your life, remember? Twice, against my better judgment. Yes. Visiting is now over. Thank you. Never let me forget that, will you? All right, I'll look into it. But I'm promising you nothing. No change, does it? Bend it, bend it, just a little bit. Well, funny in here. Aye, well, Alan left the lid off a tin of paint. What about my fish? Don't have paint taints in my fish. Hey, what about my van? I've every manty monkey for miles following me for months. And hey, listen, if they get this thing sorted out tonight, you know, I can only pull this the once. Cheers, Uncle Ken. It's nothing much, I promise. But what is it exactly? What's wrong? It's women's problems. I've been having trouble with me monthlies. They call it gynaecological investigations. But an operation, it, isn't that serious? No, it's just easier for the doctor if I'm asleep. Look, the doctor says this sort of thing is very common in women of my age. But if they don't treat it now, then I might have a problem having children later on. Sorry to keep you waiting. Right. We're ready for you now, Miss Peterson. Oh, bless my love. I'll be here when you wake. Unless a lifeboat, I imagine something more substantial. Deal with it. Stinks to high. Heaven. Gary McMartry, PDQ. It's fish. I know it's fish. You are the brain of Britain today, aren't you? What's in those sacks? What, these? Top quality spuds. King Eddie's. More like King Kong's. Come on, Alan. Come in. Gordon. You're listening to me. Sorry. I said, what's the police constable one? I'd rather not. 
If you don't mind. Well, no wonder she didn't want to be admitted. Um, right, we're going to need to send a sample to the blood bank for cross-matching, Ness. And can you clear the main theatre, please? She's had a backstreet abortion. And whoever's responsible has left her in a terrible mess. Point of a box number. It's confidential. All I'm after is a name. Well, it's more than my job's worth to betray an advertiser's confidence. And I'm sure it's more than your job's worth if your employer discovered exactly why you were up before the bench five years ago. That's not fair, Sergeant Blayton. The choice is yours. to board or something. You gotta get your timing right. Just step over as they're pulling apart. All right. Get your own way round as they're coming together and you're strong with you. Right. One hand over the other and don't look down. All right. You want the last to go first. After you, Doctor. I can't hear you, I'm afraid. She's under sedation. Why? Where are you taking her? Uh, we're taking her to theatre. Her condition's deteriorated. She's in need of emergency surgery. What's happened to her? Well, I'll have a better idea when, uh, when I get a closer look. Well, hardly an adequate explanation, Doctor. Uh, nurse? Uh, nurse Ogden will show you where you can wait while she's in theatre, OK? This isn't good enough. I insist to speak to the surgeon. You're speaking to her. Now, please, just try not to worry. Right? Doctor, my outpatient's clinic is finished. I thought I'd hang around and observe you in action. You understand? What's his name? David. He's our dad. David? David, can you hear me? David? Did you see what happened? No. Must have fell down from deck. Adam here found him. We're gonna move him to Kelly. But we started to have a fit, so we thought, best leave him here. He hasn't been well for a while now. Has he complained of any symptoms? Not that he'd admit to, but he's been slowing down. His hearing isn't what he was. He's not as quick on his feet. Pulse is okay. He won't admit he's more of a hindrance than a help. We've been on at him to take it easier, but miserable old good, he'd rather die than hand the business of it. It's too much for him at his age. What's up with him, Doggy? Uh, extensive bruising to the face, probably from when he fell. No significant depression of the skull, which is good news. Thanks. Normal eye reflexes. You say he's fitting? Yeah, but bad. That's why we call the Coast Guard. Has he ever had fits before? Only in temper. Let's get him stabilised. Neck collar, please, man. Hey, it's the skin you're supposed to be peeling. There's half a spud on that one. Well, do it yourself if you don't think it's good enough. Oh, look. It's not all brown. Did your mother not teach you anything? I only ever see them when the chips. Once they're peeled, you're supposed to put them in water. You... Here, fill that up. They won't all fit in that. Hang on, what's in that? 
I've just chucked a load of sheets in. Chuck them back out again, sharpish. Get your father to hospital as soon as possible. Can I use the radio? I need to pass a message through the Coast Guard. What happened to your hand? Bang, you don't winch you earlier. It's now. Well, let me take a look. Oh, well, there's no need. Thanks, Doctor. Tell me it's just shoved. Let him see it. Move that for me. Well, we'll have to x-ray, but it looks like a classic fracture of the second and third metacarpals. How did you do it again? I went out wrong with you this morning when we were letting down the necks. Told you, a clank winch. Well, this particular fracture is almost always a result of punching something or someone with extreme force. He swung for me first. I couldn't stand it any longer, so I let him have it. But I swear, I saw him walk away. You're saying that you hit him? Were you? You knocked him out and chucked him down the ladder. I hit him, but he walked away. He would hate his rain. You tried to kill our dad. You tried to murder him. You've got more reason to want rid of him than I have. He could easily have kicked him down. Damn about who did what. The important thing is to get your father to hospital as soon as possible. We well, tried to murder the old man. We should call the police. Don't listen to him, Doctor. He's lying. You're just trying to set me up. There's plenty of time for this later. Come on, Fick. We've all heard you whining about how he sits on the profits and won't stump up for another boat. I ain't. You're the one that was always going on about how he kept us short, too tight fisted to bring us in on our own. But I didn't decide to do him in so I could get the insurance money instead. Come out here to try and save your father's life. You have some respect, for God's sake. Your father needs to be transferred to hospital immediately. Any deterioration because of the delay, and I'll hold you both responsible. Call the cops. Call him now. Nurse Taylor will see to your hand. And no more fighting. Or I'll be the one calling the police. Understood? What, is that sign not big enough for you? Or can't you read? Um, I was uh, looking for someone called Bowman. You found him. So what do you want? Well, I believe you're looking for someone called Claude Jeremiah Greengrass. Greengrass? It's me you're looking for. Come here. Come here. I promise you, Doctor. I did hit him. I didn't shove him down like that. Save your explanations for the police. Keep still, will you? All I know is, when my dad headed to that ladder, he was walking all right. A bit funny round face, like. In what way? Oi. He was blinking, sort of unsteady. Mind you, I did hit him hard. I saw him get on the ladder. I saw him put his foot on top rung, then I turned and walked up deck. God's honest truth. When I left him, he was fine. Excellent job, Doctor. Excellent. Mind you, I wouldn't have used a fan and steel incision myself. That young lady, Miss Peterson, her young man's very concerned. As well he should be. The mess he's got her into. She had some complications from an illegal termination. And her young man, a clergyman. He was unaware of her condition. When I think of the time wasted on these murderers when there are so many God-fearing women out there without families of their own. Sister, I'm not prepared to debate the ethics with you. Where is he? 
I left him in reception. Thank you. Eve's in recovery while she comes around from the anaesthetic. Why? What's been wrong with her? We've had to perform an emergency hysterectomy. What? Why? Well, uh, I'll bring her up to the ward when she comes round and then you can speak to her yourself. Why will nobody tell me what's going on? I'm very sorry. duty to inform the authorities. And I have a duty towards my patient. Whoever did that to her, she'll be strung up. Well, that's if she'll reveal who she went to. All the more reason to get the law in. Put the fear of God into her. Look, a bedside interrogation is absolutely the very last thing this girl needs at the moment. So, when you have a dead body on your hands, you will inform the coroner that you colluded with a woman who had an illegal abortion? Mr. Rose, it won't come to that. Claw Greengrass? Not necessarily. It all depends who wants to know. My name's Brenda. Is it? Oh, there's a clever girl. Do you know your surname and all? Oh, I love telling. My mother was Irene Stockton. I'm your daughter. Hello, Dad. Speaking to Dr. Weatherill. She won't tell me anything. I beg you for the love of God, please tell me. Has Eve been. Was she expecting a baby? It's best you speak to the doctor. Mum passed over last Christmas. Did you? Sorry to hear that. She said when you found out you'd be dancing on her grave. Did she? <laughs> Knowing her, she was probably buried at sea. I'm, I'm afraid we didn't part on the best of terms, Brenda. I was always pestering her, but Mum won't be drawn. Didn't even put your name on my birth certificate. I know. Uh, she, she said she didn't want you to go through life with a millstone like me round your neck. All she'd say was you were an inveterate malingerer. Wouldn't know an honest day's work if he hit you in the face, but... I knew you couldn't be that bad. She was a bitter woman, you know, your mother. So, uh, what put you on the trail of Claude here, Brenda? Going through her things, I found an old newspaper cutting from years ago when, when he were up in court. Ah. I put two and two together. I, I guessed he were my dad. Thanks to you, I found him. You're not angry with me, are you? Don't be tough. There's, a, there's, there's honestly not a, not a day gone by when I've not thought about where you were or, or what you were doing. It was Eve who told you to keep this quiet, wasn't it? I'm sorry, I, I don't understand. Why didn't you tell me she was pregnant? I can't betray the confidence of my patients. I'm sorry. What happened? Did, did she try to get rid of it and something went wrong? Look, you're going to need to speak to Eve, OK? Well, don't you think I have a right to know? Look, I really can't comment. I'm sorry. Oh, I might have known you women with close ranks. I can assure you that any doctor would have done the same, right? And if you'll excuse me. Very peculiar, all these complaints about some sort of odour. Can you smell anything? No, no, I can't smell it. No, neither can I. 
Ah, just one moment. Yes. You know, if I didn't know better, I could have sworn that I could smell fish. Fish? No, no, no I can't smell fish. The mortuary is unoccupied at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe that drain's blocked again. Oh, no, no, Mr. Middlesh, no, no, no. Uh, it won't be the drain. No, I checked that this morning, that's as clear as a bell. Well, it has to be something. Um, Washing machines, yes, that's what it is, the washing machines. You see, what happens is there's a backlog of dirty water and, uh, well, it's not designed to cope with the volume. So what happens then is... perhaps it... we had better go and have a look. Ninety-one. Ninety-two. So you want to have Tea, then, Mr. I'm not deaf, Ken. No, I know you're not deaf, Mr. Middleditch. I did expect the laundry to be up and running by now. Yes, well, we are doing our best, Mr. Middleditch. I issued petty cash for these rare mechanical parts this morning. Uh, yes, and we fitted them straight away. I just don't know why the old girl isn't working. <laughs> Maybe that is because the machine appears to be full of potatoes. Your internal injuries were severe and irreparable. I promise you I'd only have performed this operation as a last resort. So, so we'll never have children. I'm very sorry. <laughs> think that it serves me right. I don't think anybody deserves to go through what's happened to you. I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't have had that baby. <laughs> you don't have to explain, I do understand. I've ruined my life. All that I've ever wanted is to be married. left for me. Uh, how am I, how am I going to explain all of this to Charles? Well, you know, sometimes people who care about us can be a lot more understanding than we no, expect. You can never know. No, you can never know. You can never know about that baby. Why did you feel that you weren't able to tell Charles that you were pregnant? <laughs> Because it wasn't his. <gasps> With him being a chaplain, we were doing it properly. <gasps> we were saving it for the wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids? There's five of them, all dying to meet the new granddad. Well, it seems congratulations are in order. You will come and see us when they let you out. Uh, well, uh, you see, I, I think I'm going to be in here for quite a while yet, because I keep having these, what's it, relapses all the time. Are you still not dressed, Mr Greengrass? Come on, the sooner you get out of that bed, the better for both of us. Excuse me, nurse. My father's a sick man. Only in the head. Come on, Mr Greengrass, I won't tell you again. It's time to go home. I knew it would be too much to ask. All these years you've spent pretending I don't exist. It was, it was your mother. She, was, she, she won't let me near you. She were right. You never wanted me then. You don't want me now. Goodbye, Dad. I don't believe this. Are you letting her go just like that? Uh, it's, it's probably for the best. After all she's done to find you. Well, come on, Oscar. Look at me. I've got no money. I've got the clothes I stand up in, nowhere to live. I'm not exactly your, your fairy tale long lost father, am You're I? You're not getting away with this, Greengrass. Uh, what are you going to do, arrest me? I wish. Uh... Brenda, can you hang on a minute? Thanks for trying, Mr Blakedon, but it was a fool to think you'd give a damn about me. Look, I'm pretty sure he does care, you know, deep down. He's got a funny way of showing it. Well, he's as stubborn as a mule. He can't see further than the end of his nose at the best of times. I best be off, Mr. Blaketon. No, don't give up on him, not just yet. I'm sure he wants to get to know you. It's just his pride that's stopping him. Also, I think he's trying to protect you. How's that? 
Well, the truth is, Brenda, your dad's seen better days. He's on his uppers. He's got nothing. I don't think he wants to burden you with that. It was far too distressed for someone who cold bloodedly attempted murder. As if you'd know. Anyway, one of them must be lying through his teeth. Well, you have to admit it. I wouldn't get that sort of experience in London. No. Wouldn't get a black eye either. That just adds to my rugged good looks. Women's problems, you said. The doctor discovered it was a bit more complicated than she thought. Stop lying to me. Just tell me whose it was. It only happened the once. It didn't mean anything. He refused to stand by you, so you decided to settle for second best. I've only ever wanted you. I love you. So you just gave yourself to a stranger on a whim? And... When did it happen, this assignation, this one-off? Or was it more than that? Tell me, Eve, you owe me that courtesy at least. It was after the end of Turn Dance. We all went to the pub. Only he kept buying me drinks, too many drinks. They went to my head. I didn't know what I was doing. So he forced himself on you? It was a mistake. It was a stupid, terrible mistake. Who was it? What does it matter now? What are you frightened of? Why are you protecting him? There are other people involved. He's married? It's Gordon Flynn. Gordon Flynn? You gave yourself to Gordon Flynn? And his wife with a baby on the way? Don't you think that I know that? I was so ashamed. And then when I found out that I was pregnant, I... No, please don't go, please! Come along. Come along. Don't upset yourself. Shh. Come along. Hiya. That looks nasty. What have you done? Oh, some fishermen took exception to my accident. Took my mind off a of sea sickness, though. You've been out at sea? Yeah. On a lifeboat, no less. No one told me. Well, Mr. Middle just seemed to think, um, well, with all you had on at the moment. Did he? Did he now? Oh, no, not again. What's he been saying now? Nothing. Wait. That is, I was wondering if you'd like to come and stop at the farm to convalesce. I can take care of myself. I don't need charity. Bob has got room for a few more round our table. You can stop as long as you like. One thing, you have to like dogs. We breed lurchers, tend to take over the place. And the, the estate next to us, it runs games, so we never run short of a few birds, if you see what I mean. Sounds like an offer you can't refuse, eh, Greengrass? Why don't you come home, Dad? Come on with me. Come on. I gave the message to Dr. Cheriton because I knew you'd have to get back for your children. Why don't you just go home? Go on. Why the hell would I want to do that? Look, I'm sick and tired of people treading on eggshells. My wife's the invalid, not me, so please. 
just allow me to get on with my work. We are all very aware of your domestic predicament, Gordon. We're only trying to help. I know. Of course. I'm sorry. It's just been a wretched day. I apologize. Eve's very distressed. Can you come to her? Don't you have a word to show what may be done? Have you never heard? A woman has to be desperate to put herself through this ordeal. She was trying to protect you in a funny sort of way. Is that what you think? She wasn't alone in creating this baby. A man has to have a certain responsibility, too. I would go and tell him, but the news might just upset his wife. I beg you, for. So you're not... No, that honour goes to a colleague of Eve's. Um, I think they call it a one-night stand. I see. I was surprised as well to discover that my fiancé not only betrayed me and deceived me, but also killed her unborn child. And if I hadn't have worked out what's been going on, she'd be lying to me still, and she has the temerity to attempt to pass it off as a mistake. Whatever Eve did, she's paid heavily for it. After what she's done to me, no one would condemn me for walking away. I suppose they wouldn't. But how can I... when I still love her? I think your father had an epileptic fit. But not until after the exchange of blows between you. I told you. I told you, he just went. We're waiting for the results of the EEG, but I'm fairly certain that's what happened. You've never had fits before. Epilepsy can strike at any time of life. And if your father was in an emotional state immediately beforehand... You were ready to murder me. I think the fit must have occurred as he climbed down the ladder. That's what made him fall. So, I'm in the clear. Well, I think so, yes. <sighs> well, thank you, Doctor. And, uh, I never meant to whack you on. Sorry. My fault for getting in the way. Right, let's get home. Let Mum know what's happening. One more thing. If the neurologist confirms my suspicions, your father will have to relinquish his skipper's license for a minimum of three years. You mean he couldn't go to sea? Only as a passenger. Then, if you're passing by a red car, yeah, I'll keep on going. Yeah, don't stop when you get to the sea. I, I'll tell you something though, Oscar. I never thought I'd see the day when I'd say this, but thanks for what you did. Keep taking those pills, Mr. Greengrass. Oh, till I rattle <laughs> to our sister. All right, Brenda. Do you know, I was never sure of my opinion on the nature nurture debate until now. Like two peas in a pod. Let's hope she realises what she's taken on. Several candles will be lit for the continuing good health of Mr. Greengrass at the earliest opportunity. <laughs> this woman could have killed you, Eve. If you tell the police, then... You'd be preventing her from doing it to anybody else. All right. I will. Oh, uh, and have you thought about what you might say to Charles? He already knows. He hates me for it. He's left me. I won't be seeing him again. Excuse me. Oh, my 
can't blame you for hating me. I'd feel exactly the same in your position. You should try to get some rest. I'll be back to see you in the morning. to look on her home. Night, Doctor. Night, is he? Here we go, Uncle Ken. Oh, lovely. Hey, that's 20 quid for the hospital immediate care fund. Minus, uh, my condition, of course. Hey, what about me? It was me who did all the healing. Yeah, and it was me who got all the flack from middle bits. Hey, as you be first customers, I've got a couple of light ales out the back. Good, yeah. Good, yeah. Good, yeah. Good, yeah. What's wrong? Uh, my phone in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Here you go, Uncle Ken. Oh, thanks very much, sir. Listen, we've got a dash. We've, uh, we've an emergency up at the hospital. And if we're not there, it all goes to pot, you know. Eh? Uh, to get put plenty of salt and vinegar on them chips. Well, will do, will do. Cheers, Uncle Ken. See ya. Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to Hot Kirk's Fisheries. You know when you put the spuds in the washing machine, did you think to change the water? No. Well, that's why the chips taste like salt and I'll get in the van. <laughs> Well, let's hope the worst thing he remembers is a bad dream. But I was standing there with him on my own. He came round for a few seconds, started screaming something about electricity. Jeffrey, what's the matter? Please don't make me go in there. Please don't make me go in there. I'll play the Would there be any point in asking why there's a dog in reception? It's because of the snake. <laughs> 